Francis, you talk about this inflection point with solutions like immunotherapy, but we're also at an inflection point because of artificial intelligence. And that has the potential to put some of this progress on steroids if you have the funds. But cutting these funds is pretty much cutting off the opportunity to unlock the mystery of many of these diseases with the power of AI. You're totally right, uh, Katie. Uh, and AI is all the buzz in, in lots of settings. And people are, I think, primarily considering it in other areas like um, cars that don't have uh, human drivers or things that are happening in, in the tech world. But in medicine, AI has got this incredible promise and much of it's already being realized. Take, for instance, the ability to use AI for images like x-rays that in the past had to be read by radiologists in a dark room who maybe got a little tired and missed something. Uh, the AI version of this turns out to be, in many instances, more accurate, more reliable. It doesn't get tired in the middle of the night. Similarly, AI can do things with electronic health records to make sense out of information that just we humans digging through may miss and figure out, for instance, when a particular patient in a hospital has had a turn, that means you really got to look and see quickly what's happening before there is a crisis. All of those things are becoming quite real, but they require experts and the experts require stability in their job, of course, and they need to be in a circumstance where there's staff surrounding them who have the knowledge about the medicine and the other things that are important uh, for pursuing one of these projects. And right now, because of all these changes and the staff reductions, there is a great deal of concern about the teams doing this, about whether they're going to be able to go forward in the way that they would like to. Frankly, people are really demoralized. Uh, they're just not sure how to move forward in this situation. It does feel like in some ways there's been some targeting of scientists as if, particularly if they're federal scientists, that they're part of the problem. Instead of thinking about these as folks who are giving their life to public service, trying to find answers, and many of them accepting financial support that is far less than they could get in the private sector, but it's what they wanna do and they're determined to do it. And to have them now treated this way and dismissed without an explanation in some instances, or considered as if they're sort of part of an obstacle instead of part of an answer, that's very hard to watch.